we'll start in a moment. There we go. All right. So hello and welcome to our community call on Thursday, June 16th. Um, thank you all for joining us. Uh, we're going to start off with chatting a little bit about some community uh, efforts here at SCURF and just some of the events that are taking place uh, and specifically events that are out in the world, um, ones that we're getting connected to. Um, and yeah, from there, we'll kind of have a, a discussion about some SCURF community uh, and we'll see uh, if there are any other kind of topics we want to get into uh, and see if, yeah, if there's any other kind of projects who are here and would feel uh, comfortable bringing up what they're working on. Because I do see we have at least a few external folks in the audience today. Um, cool. So yeah, with that, I will, uh, let me just quickly make sure there's nothing in here. Yeah, this looks good. All right, cool. Um, so these are, a number of these are tentative. Uh, so just keep that bit in mind. Um, but overall, uh, we're thinking through what are the different events that are going on. Uh, I recently presented a class. We have a chain link AMA that's going to be happening later today. Um, thanks to uh, Fotis, he set us up uh, for me to be uh, giving a presentation on decentralized research centers next Monday, uh, and then being on a DSI panel on the 21st. And those are both going to be virtual, and we'll share more information in the links. And I know Fotis has been dropping those in the in the community channel, so hopefully uh, folks get a chance to, get, to check out MetaFest, not MetaCon. Um, but then, yeah, next Wednesday, there's going to be a Dow Day in New York. So if anyone is going to be in New York from the SCURF community, please let me know. Happy to try to connect. And there will be a couple folks who are, who are definitely going or are trying to go and are trying to see uh, if we can uh, find a way for a few more folks to go, given that tickets apparently just got sold out recently. Um, then, yeah, I think this is actually the 24th, 25th, but then Friday, Saturday is funding the commons, which is uh, organized by Protocol Labs. Um, still ironing out the details, but I'm uh, most likely to be emceeing both part of the Friday and the Saturday session, where I think Friday is more uh, Protocol Labs oriented content and Saturday is a joint unconference session with uh, with Gitcoin, so that should be an interesting one. Um, then, yeah, next uh, note in not this coming Monday, but the following Monday on the 27th, we'll have the Impact Networks Reading Group internally at SCURF. Uh, so this is especially for folks who already have a sense of SCURF or want to dive deeper on the structure of SCURF and what we're all about and discussing the book read, uh, Impact Networks as a, a way to think about some of our activities here at SCURF. Uh, and to frame some activities going forward. Um, yeah, there's a small meetup happening uh, on the 28th. I'm still waiting to, to get more details on that. Um, yeah, on the 30th, we're going to have our community call on Impact Networks. Um, on July 13th and 14th, we're organizing a, uh, a uh, virtual workshop that will bring together a bunch of academics. So we're going to collaborate with them on that. Um, ETHCC, I'll be presenting, actually this is now going to be more on, uh, I think it's on decentralized research centers. Uh, I'll double check what I updated my, uh, what, what I updated the talk to and go from there and we'll update the sheet. Uh, at the end of July, we have an event in Taiwan uh, where Tuan is gonna be presenting uh, on SCURF uh, and I think Jerry and Bill might also be attending generally. Um, then at the end of August, there's the Stanford Blockchain Conference coming up. Um, and uh, on September 1st, which is the day after, they have three days of official programming. And then on September 1st, uh, MetaGov, Dow Research Collective, and SCURF got invited to host a workshop on Dow Science. Uh, so that is getting, um, yeah, that's getting organized right now. Uh, then on... 6th to 9th, there's MCON in uh, in Denver still. Uh, well, this is tentatively attending. This is not definite. So seeing if it makes sense to try to organize. And I recently caught up with someone uh, from Chainlink, and we'll see if there's room to collaborate there in a potential event. Um, DSI Boston is happening towards the end of September. Uh, and this is probably going to be the biggest DSI conference of the year. Uh, and so, yeah, still waiting on details. Uh, I will be likely helping organize some, at least some parts of it. Uh, I, I'm not, uh, I'm not officially uh, jumped in yet, but I did offer to uh, run a peer review on conference session there. 
because I think that can be really helpful in terms of the activities that we're doing on our peer review project and just building some of the community, uh, building on some of the community activities we're trying to get have more focus there. Um, then SmartCon, which is um, SmartCon, which is Chainlink's conference that's going to organize that's going to happen at the end of uh, September in New York. Uh, we're still ironing out, but we might organize a panel. Um, and then, yeah, DEF CON in Bogota, still figuring out ways to get involved. Uh, and then in January, we got invited. We were asked to collaborate with a professor from UT Austin to do an ACM academic conference focused on uh, blockchain. That would be more of a proper formal academic conference sometime in early 2023, uh, probably in January. Um, so that's some of the landscape of events that that we're kind of uh, thinking about uh, in general. Um, there's overall, I mean, in Web3 right now, there's just an absurd amount of events going on, uh, especially as, um, yeah, just a lot of uh, COVID restrictions lighten and whatnot. So in case anyone is interested, here is a long list of projects that uh, the Crypto Nomad community put together. Uh, and this is, excuse me, a, a very extensive list of different events and whatnot. Um, so yeah, any questions, thoughts, concerns, or just things people would want to see in the way Scurf interacts with these kind of live events? Um, yeah, happy to hear what what people think in terms of uh, uh, in terms of that. And if there's no particular thoughts on the events, I'm very happy to pivot away from that and. Uh, jump into any general elements of community. Brian, I don't know if there's anything else you wanted to, to bring up or, or mention in terms of uh, some of the, the calendar updates or anything related to that. Uh, but yeah, sure. Be, yeah. Yeah, sure. So last Friday and the second Friday of every month, we have a source cred community committee. Uh, so we gather there to talk about uh, source cred and how it is affecting SCURF and how we can mold it moving forward. It's an open uh, uh, event for everybody to come and join in. Uh, let's see. Um, on every Monday, we have community call EU and APAC. That's uh, PST time, 6:30 in the morning uh, every Monday. Of course, we're currently in the community. And uh, let's see. We also have the Discord monthly community, which is the first Friday of every month. That's at 1 p.m. And uh, there we are discussing how um chat is going we call chat discord within our community and um it's well is is also an open uh meeting and everybody is invited to come and share your thoughts and talk about how you'd like to see change within those communities those spaces i should say that's what's on the calendar currently oh and i'm sorry i missed one uh the first monday of every month at 11 a.m we have an onboarding info session as well that's for people who are new to SCURF, and the information for that can be found inside of our Discord server. Uh, yes, Paul. Yeah, I was just going to follow up on the source cred because um, I'd like to chat about that really quick if we have a little bit of time. But as, if you still have some things that you want to get through calendar wise, I'd be happy to defer and then wait until you're done with calendar stuff. No, thanks. That was it for now. Cool. So, yeah, I guess I also wanted to take this opportunity uh, since Brian brought up the source cred. A community meeting to just kind of give people like an update on what's going on. Uh, we had a really good meeting uh, on Friday. Uh, we got, I want to say it was like 16 people involved, including some people that we, I don't think we've seen in chat before. So that was kind of neat to be able to have that discussion. And one of the things that I'm particularly pleased about how that meeting went, or I guess there's two reasons why I'm pleased with how that meeting went. One, as part of this experiment with source cred at SCURF, right, we're very interested in you know, making sure that as a community, we have some voice uh, from the community of how that implementation is going. And we had a really good conversation about what do we do when, um, so for those of you not familiar with what our source cred implementation does, right, uh, we have people who are generating cred through their contributions to the forum, uh, but they have not opted in to get paid out uh, by, um, our equation, 
in Dai, right? And so basically that goes back into a community pool that gets distributed to everybody. Uh, we currently have a situation where, you know, there's some people who are producing quite a bit of cred, but they're not opting in. And right now that's possible that you can kind of get a pretty good little bonus just by opting in, which is pretty neat. And we had a really robust conversation about what does that mean? What is that signaling? Uh, what do we want to do? And as a committee, I think we kind of got to a place of like, well, right now we're trying to just encourage people to be part of source cred. So I'm very interested in kind of that part of our source cred, of like people thinking about what we're trying to accomplish as a community. How do we set source cred to accomplish those types of goals? And you know, how do we pull those levers? The other thing that I'm interested in though is us as a community like doing good committee work um, and maybe because we're in web three we need to come up with a better term than committees because committees do not sound fun and exciting um but one of the things that i think that we at scurf are starting to maybe experiment with or get into a little bit is the idea of you know how do we have these kind of distributed groups uh, within our community that have areas of expertise or they develop areas of expertise. Uh, so the people who are routinely coming to the source cred meetings, I could see over time uh, developing some of their leadership skills, uh, being able to run committees, right? It's a, it's a level up, uh, human level up. Um, one of the things that we're trying to do to support that is work on a project board that gives basically community committees the ability to do some things or have some tools to align what they're accomplishing with maybe people who are brand new to scurf and things like that so one of the things that i've been experimenting with is having an agenda and having meeting minutes that go up into github as issues and sharing those in our chat uh, while we try to des design what this project board would look like uh, so between now and the end of the month um, or actually for the beginning of next month uh, I'm going to basically be soliciting items for an agenda for the next source cred meeting and seeing if we can experiment with doing that in GitHub. Um, as soon as I am done chatting here, I'm going to go find that or I'm going to go make that ticket and I will share it with this group. So if you want to start adding agenda items that you'd like to talk about, it doesn't have to be today. Uh, but th that's a way that we can have some community leadership at SCURF uh, as well when it comes to the various projects that we're working on. So that's what I wanted to add to the source grid thing. So it's not just a thing that's happening to us, like we are actively engaged in as a community developing it. Great, thank you, Paul. And if anyone is interested in, in uh, checking out, we have forum posts about it, there's calls that happen uh, related to it. Uh, and yeah, I think there's always more interest in getting more input and in how, yeah, just general thoughts on, on where you see this going or, or, or how you might want to get involved. So please feel free to reach out in Discord as well, if anything. Rich, please. I would love to follow on that discussion, Paul. Um, there's uh, the source credit as a first implementation of uh, giving some agency to our community, uh, some self-direction, and that's... I'm very passionate about that personally, and I think that SCURF is going to increasingly be moving in those directions. We want um, to facilitate the space, which is, a, we can get into that if anybody has any questions about what that actually means, uh, because it's a big one. We also want to help facilitate our own community uh, to uh, do some self-directed activities. Um, that includes governance responsibilities. So we have projects, we're gonna, as our projects become more and more complex or uh, successful, we are going to be looking to spin them out. And this is a model that's worked for me in the past. And I would love to continue that at SCURF where uh, we come up with a great idea, we get some great uh, contributors and highly skilled individuals to help us with those ideas. As they become too successful to remain underneath the umbrella of SCURF, we can, um, I said the unfortunate analogy I usually use is let the little birdies leave, leave the nest. And then we can get some treasury uh, assigned to those individuals and get a mandate assigned and let them uh, do some self-directed activities. Source credit is a good example of that. Um, thank you, Paul, for taking the lead in the first uh, example of this at SCURF. But we have uh, a mechanism in which the our community can reward community members for doing things that are good for the community and for SCURF. So there's this great inception model happening here, but it also uh, allows us the opportunity to do things like treasury management. So right now we have 5,000 die a month allocated to the uh, source grid pool. I would very much like um, to have the community or the source grid 
let's not call it community. I think the, the new cool thing is guild. So we're in web three, so let's call it guild. It's exactly the same thing, but let's just call it something different. So the web the, the source grade guild can um also determine how it allocates its own treasury. And and that's is great for a couple of reasons. If like the agency thing I was talking about, and it also removes me from the process, which is a, a huge win in my books. So watching the ecosystem uh start debating how funds are allocated um, is a fascinating uh, process to watch. And so we can continue to do those kinds of things. So um, there's lots of opportunities here to uh, identify something that you think SCURF should be doing, getting some people together to do that thing, uh, being successful at that thing, and then eventually just owning that thing with your team. And that's something that we're going to be fostering more and more and more. Um, if anybody has any thoughts about that, please uh, feel free to jump on the mic or and or interrupt or let's do some brainstorming. Um, in the absence of that, though, please don't stop doing that if you're thinking about it right now. But uh, there's always things top of mind for me uh, with Scurf, and there's always themes going on in the background. Um, and while um, Eugene was talking, I wrote up a list of things that I've been thinking about recently, and I'm going to type those into the sidebar. Um, and if anybody has any thoughts about any of these ideas or anything else that might be uh, something that they've been thinking about, please feel free to, to ask the question. We can just have a general brainstorming uh, round robin chat today if people are interested in that as well. Yeah, I'd actually well. immediately uh, have a comment on the first one, if I may. Um, Go ahead. So one thing I'd love to, about being a facilitator in the space is to bring other calendars into our space actually and kind of reverse it around a little bit i was thinking about that the other day um and as we are bringing more and more people into our space it would be nice to have a way to collect thoughts about other spaces that are relevant to our space and to kind of start developing a map of some sort um or a channel between our spaces and other spaces so um yeah just an open thought on that thanks yeah absolutely I'll just do one quick shameless plug before I hand it off to Chris. I just mentioned our AMA on Reddit is getting kicked off. So if anyone wants to keep track of that, the link's in the chat. Chris, please. Yeah, to sort of follow up on what Brian's saying, I think there is an opportunity to coordinate topics of discussion by the calendar and then in the way that Eugene has been sort of facilitating group conversations between organizations, making sure that organizations aren't stepping on each other's toes but also if we're going to have a conversation say about like DSI, make sure all the DSA organizations are invited to that conversation um, and in having uh, like a visible calendar that also is publicly accessible there is this opportunity to sort of it's not that scurf has to be the backbone but if scurf develops its own like in the same way that there's seasons in the podcast, if we have our own trajectory of topics, like in, it's already sort of working itself out, but aligned with uh, conferences so that there's actionable output from the conferences that then gets captured in the forum, then we sort of create this ecosystem where we're going back and forth between having conferences and iterating and then capturing what was iterated and then having it organized in a calendar so we don't lose track of what has been discussed in the past what's planned in the future and how those things connect because then this is how i feel like we start to connect our organizational memory to make sure that the right hand knows what the left hand is doing but also that they're not going in completely different directions um and this is where the calendar as the backbone really makes all that possible. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm hoping that between especially calendar and, and Discord chat and getting the right kind of activity there, we can kind of bubble up more and more um, both enthusiasm and excitement to be able to build that momentum, but also start using things like GitHub boards to propose event ideas and like find the other tools necessary to capture any anything that can come out of that uh, momentum. But yeah, I see Fotis, you had your virtual hand up. Yeah, uh, it's very nice to hear such comments and such ideas because this is what I think uh, the 
role of the community cross pollinator force curve can be. Uh, this is like a very clear actionable. This is a very clear initiative that we can work towards. And uh, at least for uh, in terms of the aspect of facilitation and I, uh, these conversations that uh, Brian and Chris brought, uh, I think, uh, reiterating things that we have been talking between us in the as community cross pollinators. So that's really nice to hear some um, to have this uh, convergence of ideas. And in terms of the calendar, uh, I have to say that uh, the tooling for calendars is not up to something like that. It is very primitive, I would even say. Uh, in terms of uh, cross organization uh, coordination, but there are some things that are happening, especially I don't know if you uh, people know meet with wallets. And I can let you know what's happening with this, this uh, the development that's happening if made with wallet and maybe people can be involved to actually realize something like this. Uh, and I will leave uh, resources in the chat or somewhere else or in the Discord. Um, but yeah, generally, it's great to hear such ideas <laughs> and such convergence of, convergence of ideas. Yeah, absolutely. And that's where I'm yeah, really excited to to hear if anyone else has thoughts and wants to to contribute to the discussion, please. But Brian, I, I feel like you're about to jump in and I spoke over here. Yeah, thanks. Um, as you mentioned, project boards and GitHub, and I just wanted to say that I've been working with a lot of folks here at SCURF to push that forward and to start talking about automation, issue templates, and so on and so forth. And it's it's a really great conversation that we're having. So I just wanted to kind of make myself available to everybody here uh, and to remind everybody to please feel free to reach out to me and I can help you sort your project boards out, move them forward and integrate them with some auto automation and uh, kind of move everything forward. So with that, I'll turn it back. Thank you. Uh, just making sure, Fotis, was there something else or uh, that you wanted to jump in with or should I, should I drop the virtual hand? Cool. Uh, Adrian, no, no. Oh, Adrian, did you want to jump in? Yeah, I actually just wanted to, I'm, I feel like I'm kind of, uh, this is kind of tangential, but I wanted to chat about outreach since we were kind of on the topic. I was wondering if we had any tools. I know very little about this. So I'm actually asking, what kind of tools do we use for outreach? I mean, on a large scale, like going to Twitter, Discord, everywhere, you know, like, is there a general way we communicate, hey, there's an event happening with our community? And then is there a more subtle set of channels of people that we know more specifically, like contacts at specific organizations we're working with? How do we contact all of those people and make sure like, hey, this is a direct communication we want to set up with you? I think that kind of stuff is probably really important at the gate here as we're talking about building community. So. Yeah, thank you for bringing that up. So just for some uh, overall color on that side. So at SCURF and the way you're kind of alluding to outreach, we kind of have two general buckets of and we think of sort of discovery is what are we pushing out to the world and letting the world know about SCURF and outreach is more in, in traditional business talk like strategic partnerships and events in terms of what are the specific thing, mechanisms we want to put in place to, uh, in a very intentional way, try to pull particular uh, people or communities into, uh, into SCURF. So in terms of discovery, you know, say for our community calls, right, uh, we do uh, put out tweets around them, we post on LinkedIn, we post in our uh, Discord, uh, you know, as appropriate, um, we do absolutely reach out. I know I, I do reach out to some particular individuals if I think uh, it'll, it'll be particularly of interest for them. Uh, one example in that direction was our, I think it was our first official peer review call or community call just focused on peer review, but the one that Nick and Umar led. Um, and I think I, I, we both, you know, tweeted about it and we had more of a showing than usual, but I also reached out to around 20 people individually. And I think 10 to 12 of them were able to show up uh, and chime in on the discussion because they were all deeply passionate about peer review. So I think part of what we're thinking of, and I, I obviously uh, don't want to, 
to speak on Paul's behalf sort of, of direction of some of the community things. But I do think one of the things in general we're thinking of is we could, uh, you know, find uh, more support from the community management perspective is how we can best link, you know, the research activities that we're trying to do to the community that we're trying to build, right? And all of this is in service of uh, a bias for action around research and uh, actually experimentation uh, around research. And so what does it mean to fully connect the dots around there? And we're hoping that in the kind of folks that get excited about trying to help us answer those questions, you know, that we can build out a wider group of people who uh, can contribute some of those thoughts and, and direction and, and expand the set of people who are currently doing that, uh, you know, uh, hey, we have this community call. Here's 20 communities that we know will definitely be interested in this. So let's make sure we put it on their radar and uh, doing that more focused uh, kind of letting people know of our community activities. So that's definitely something we've been thinking about. We, we don't have a fully in place yet, but I know, uh, yeah, I was uh, speaking on behalf of some other folks who are in this meeting. So, uh, Paul or Maria, if there's anything you want to either jump and add on, uh, add to or uh, correct if I misrepresented, please do. I think you nailed it. Yeah, I appreciate that answer, Eugene. That was really a complete solid answer. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Anyone have any other general questions about community? One important thing that I immediately realized is the importance of also positioning ourselves in communities. Because in taking a quick look in, in that Reddit uh, AMA, uh, we were positioned as a smart contract research organization. It's like, uh-oh, we're going to have a lot of fun questions to answer now. But um, anyway, Paul. Yeah, I was just going to, maybe not so much a question, but a thing that I would like and um, back channel wise, I've proposed this. So now front of house, I will propose this. Uh, since we might have a gap in the community call schedule for next week, um, I would be happy to kind of lay out a, let's add a community section to the forum discussion um, and kind of put that on people's minds so they can kind of think about what they would want there. But I have, I think, um, some pretty solid ideas of like why that could be valuable, connecting it to this type of call, because uh, even just in the sidebar right now, there's a whole bunch of links there. Uh, and I know for me, like sometimes I'm like, oh, what was that link that was in the community call and it's gone. Um, so like, how can we have some long tail discussions that happen in our community calls? We are starting to do more and more community behavior or community things and coordination. And I think it would be fantastic if we had a section on the forum, um, but I also want to kind of get people's feedback and maybe a community call is the ideal way to do a discussion about whether or not there should be a community section on the forum. Yeah, that definitely makes sense to me. Uh, and I added it to the PPP sheet. So I guess that's what we're doing next week. Um, yeah, Brian. Yeah, just a, another kind of just off the cuff remark. Um, uh, for anybody who is looking to build a uh, slide deck in Google templates, you can right click and go new slide. And we have an actual template now that our design team made, and it's very nice. So we're starting to roll out our new design assets into our various spaces. And so if you have a presentation to make on behalf of SCURF and you need a slide deck for it, please, if you can't figure it out, reach out to me and I'll help you find it. Awesome. Thank you, Brian. I saw one question come in the chat. What does the future of building and maintaining relationships with academic entities look like? Stephanie, was there anything else you uh, wanted to, to add to that one? No, I was just curious how we start to build relationships with academic spaces that we may not already have relationships. Yeah, so there's um, a couple of ways of looking at that because one aspect of it, right, is there's the set of academic institutions that are focused on Web3 research. And sort of formally as an institution, they have a dedicated team or lab, uh, or at least acknowledge the fact that they have a disparate group of people on campus who are all doing a thing together. So they have some, you know, uh, a website or something that's official of like, hey, this is at the university domain. We recognize we're doing something here. And that can range from, you know, Stanford's blockchain, uh, what is it, the Center for Blockchain Research, or the CMU Secure Blockchain Initiative, or uh, DCI was a digital coin initiative. Um, 
that doesn't feel right. Uh, but the one from MIT, uh, and there's, you know, all these different formal labs, and that can be all the way down to a single student or faculty member or researcher is interested in it. Um, so there's the, the groups that are doing Web3 stuff. Now we're also thinking of from the meta research perspective, right, for groups that can help us think of A, how do we skirt better, or B, in the context of, say, now this open peer review experiment, wanting to connect with more researchers who don't necessarily care about Web3, but might be interested in peer review or in meta science more broadly, uh, and open science, you know, how can we collaborate and build the relevant communities there? Uh, and there, there's also the open question of, well, what are the relevant communities there, right? Because at a certain point, um, there might be questions in pure meta science that, that we might deem as out of scope for SCURF. And so like, where does the line get drawn of what is relevant that we do want to explore here versus where does kind of the line does start getting drawn? So we're still figuring that out, which makes directly answering your question a little bit uh, slightly challenging in that sense. From my perspective, I mean, I very much think that with some of the experiments that we're currently working on, we're already taking some steps in the direction of exploring that. So we're seeing, you know, how can we directly uh, potentially help SCURF, uh, people who are contributing research to SCURF, get connected to people? Um, uh, how, how can we connect either industry and academia in that sense? Uh, so, for example, we're going through uh, and trying to plan some, uh, you know, uh, a researcher that we're supporting to see, hey, can we actually set you up with the appropriate people from industry to talk to and get uh, information from to add that to research that can then inform the whole industry. So some of it will be very kind of intentional matchmaking in that sense. Um, but via something like the Dow Research uh, Hub, which we're, built, which we're working on with Medigov and with the Dow Research Collective, Right there, the first thing that that group, the Dow Research Hub as an entity is seeking funding for is to actually pay for uh, students at university, for researchers at university. And the goal around building something like the Dow Research Hub, or as I generally talk about the idea of decentralized research centers, the whole intention there is to bring together all of the research networks, all of the social and community networks, all of the uh, funding networks, and to build an operational layer around all of that uh, that can actually start in a very focused way thinking how do we help uh you know solve information discoverability on the individual topic basis so on governance or cryptography or security or something like that and i really think that uh having this combination of scurf as the foundation or i guess yeah, i always sorry invert this in my mind but scurf as the foundation um, as a, a cross research domain community, right? And that's what we've been building is whether you're focused in cryptography or governance or scaling, as long as it's web three oriented, you're welcome here. And that's the focus of our community. Well, how do we supplement that with actually going deep in focused areas, but using the found, using the forum and the SCURF community as the foundation for doing these individual deep explorations and what does that balance look like? So, um, yeah, there's happy to, to to answer more there to give my own views there. I don't know if others have other views they, they would want to see explored, right? Because that's just one version of how we can collaborate. I think at the end of the day, it's going to boil down to um, what value add can we provide to researchers who are actively doing blockchain research and how do we create value add exchanges, right? How do we get them contribute, contributing to our community? How do we help them fund their students, fund their research, uh, pay them to summarize their research? You know, what are all the potential interaction points there? Um, but then also, right, when do we want to start expanding to, hey, let's just support a student club just learning about blockchain, which for now is not our focus, right? We're much more focused on the, the expert practitioners, so to say. And so that's also where I think uh, universities and thinking of the relationships will also depend because at some places, maybe just the club will want to talk to us. Where at other places, you know, administrators and teachers and researchers and everyone might be excited to talk to us. So, um, yeah, I'm very, I, if anyone specifically wants to brainstorm this, whether now publicly or in a separate call, I would be more than happy to discuss this as it's something I think about a lot. Um, and yeah, Chris, please. Um, so one of the biggest problems I've experienced as an academic researcher is siloed information and in the process of discovering that someone else is working on a similar project or a similar research goal in a different silo it makes it on the one hand you want your research to be original and not be looking like it's copying someone else's but at the same time you don't want to be retreading the same uh data and having 
the industry or the research gets stuck in a, in a spot because everyone's working on the same thing in a different silo, not realizing that they're all doing the exact same thing. Um, so I think there is an opportunity for SCURF in the way that we've been identifying academic theories and uh, notable works and then presenting them to the potential industry players or industry uh, organizations that can make that make those theories actionable. I do feel like we're already creating a culture that is inclined to be welcoming to academics looking to get out of silos so that it's not that I don't I don't think we shouldn't be doing academic outreach more so I think the culture that we are establishing is bringing in the academics that we would want to get anyway uh, so people looking to get out of silos are naturally I think going to end up at a place like scurf whereas the people who want to keep their research private or keep it in the silo aren't they're just not going to necessarily come to scurf anyway um so i do think that right now building this culture i think gives us the academic outreach that we would want and we're getting it organically um Whereas if we try to find the people that we believe are trying to break out of silos, we might actually end up wasting a lot of energy on people who want to stay in the silos. Um, so initially, I was in this organization thinking that we'd have to do a lot more outreach towards academics. But because we're doing the, the discovery on the academic theories, and then we're by proxy highlighting the academics through their work. They and I, I have seen uh, indications that they end up coming to SCURF to see how their work is received, and then in the process, either stay around the community or um, know that we're here and can then tell other people to go to SCURF if they are looking towards something like a, a de-siloed uh, research community. Um, so I, I, not to say, like I said, I don't, I'm not saying that we shouldn't do academic outreach, but I do feel like the culture that we are trying to, that we are in the process of building is naturally creating this sort of outreach, uh, organic, like, interaction that's, that's kind of naturally occurring. And to Faith, excuse me, to Faith's question on how do we know if people want to remain in silos or not? Uh, you know, of course, right, with any kind of structure, there's going to be people who enjoy being on different sides of it. At least when I hear what things like what Chris just mentioned, I don't want to speak on your behalf, Chris, so please just jump in. Uh, but I imagine uh, in my mind that comes up as, you know, the, the people are in silos because of bad incentives, not because that, that's genuinely everyone's uh, sort of a preference landscape. Not necessarily in that um, it's like if if my work isn't finished, I just may not want people to see it until it's done because especially, okay, here's here's the thing with research. As a good researcher, I'm not trying to get to a specific data point. I present a, a hypothesis and a null hypothesis and the data is what it is. So until the there may not be a result that is worthy of people's attention, but the issue needed to be researched anyway. Until there's a final data point, I just may not want people to see it because they may take the research and start jumping to improper conclusions. Like uh, this happens a lot of times with secondhand uh, reporting on research is the journal, like a news source will take a, re a piece of research and extrapolate something that is not actually present in the data. You see this with like NASA and space stuff a lot of times where they just jump to an improper conclusion because they either are not familiar enough with the technical jargon or they're just trying to create clickbait. So it's like 
beyond any political things, when a work is not done, it can be easily misrepresented. So I think that's that actually drives a lot of people keeping their work or their research uh, siloed before it's finished so that it just doesn't get misrepresented before it's finished. Yeah, that absolutely makes sense. Uh, and yeah, I see there were some other comments that came up with some more color there. Does anyone else, uh, I don't know, Muhammad or Faith, if you have any other uh, thoughts around that, does anyone else want to kind of jump in and, and share some thoughts relating to that? Yeah, please, Muhammad. Sure. Um, publisher Parish is a real thing. And so letting something out, for, for those who aren't familiar, um, in academic circles, um, tenure is coveted. The path to tenure is publishing that is highly cited. And so uh, you want to make sure that you publish exceptional work relatively frequently uh, that other people cite. And if you start announcing what you're working on before you finished it, uh, maybe something changes in whatever ecosystem you're writing in, or maybe, you know, the, the facts can change um, uh, in, in science. And so, so sometimes people are reluctant. Uh, I've definitely been in circles, academic circles, where uh, people were like, I write some of my ideas in my notebook if I die, <laughs> but, but they don't want to let them out. So uh, that, that, that's a possible impediment. As I said in the chat, you know, not everybody's going to get it or appreciate it or want it. Uh, initially, some people see the benefit. Uh, we don't have to convert everybody. Absolutely. And that's where I think it's going to be um, interesting to think how just in general, right, where the, aside from what's going on in Web3, there's already been a trend on pushing back on, you know, in open science communities, in meta research communities, there's already different movements in the direction of pushing back against some of these historic trends. Uh, I know, uh, I believe in the EU, if you take official EU government funding or the equivalent of EU uh, government funding there, um, you pretty much have to be uh, much more, uh, you have to have, comply with certain expectations and disclosures that weren't always the norm. And you had to share in a way uh, that that wasn't always um, yeah, necessarily prevalent there. I haven't actually seen a lot of institutions try pushing back on publish or perish. It does seem unfortunate of how universities kind of seem to kind of fall into their own incentive structure around it, whether are you the labs that are shooting for the natures, are you the labs that are shooting for uh, low volume, high quality, or are you the labs that kind of have to deal with uh, just churning papers out? Um, and yeah, there's a lot of uh, different factors that go into that construction, uh, which is also an interesting element to rethink, or to think about when trying to rethink a future uh, landscape for research and kind of knowledge sharing in that way. Um, but yeah, I, I guess going back to the original question of how, how do we partner with universities or what does outreach look like? To Chris's point, I do agree that I, I we're just at such a point of building the actual activities and things that lead to useful facilitated interactions or that lead to those productive outcomes. And, you know, just making sure that everything around the forum and our community works well and adding a few experiments around that, that yeah, we, we don't actually have a huge focus on pure outreach, just given the sheer volume of tasks uh, happening on the actual kind of building scurf and providing value to the groups we're already working with. So um, yeah, and I see, yeah, there's a, a, a great conversation coming up in chat if anyone else wants to kind of bring up some uh, relevant thoughts pertaining to that and just keep uh, that aspect of the conversation going, uh, happy to. Let's see if anyone wants to jump in. Yeah, I see. Uh, yeah, uh, Chris, please feel free to jump well, in. Well, and, and it's like this is ultimately the crux of why I'm not necessarily sure that monetary incentives are going to solve all these problems because a lot of academics go into their specific fields because they want to solve specific problems, not because they're trying to make money. So it's like, on the one hand, if 
putting money towards these things can solve problems. That may be the incentive that these academics are looking for. But knowing that at like nobody in academia is under the guise that they're going to be getting rich going into academia. I've never really encountered somebody who's like, oh, I got into academia because I thought I was going to become a millionaire. Like that person is not really a, a dominant presence. So when I'm when I'm talking to academics, a lot of them are trying to solve problems. They're trying to get or build a reputation in their field. So that's where on the one hand, obviously people need money to survive, but it's these types of things that make me want to see more qualitative research into incentives and why academics are doing the things they do before people just throw a bunch of money at it and say, money's going to bring academics because I'm not, I'm not necessarily sold that that's the case based on the fact that, uh, like I said, a lot of academics, they know they're not going to get rich. And, you know, you see people who have tenure not living in mansions, not, not driving new cars. They're driving old vehicles. They're living in apartments because they're not trying to get rich off of this endeavor. And that's where I'm like, Again, they need money to survive, obviously, but I really think that this is an opportunity to start getting qualitative research on incentives from academics directly. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting now to see how some of those dynamics might be changing just given the landscape of opportunities that say a tenured CS faculty member has available to them. I know I was catching up with someone a couple months ago and they were mentioning of like, hey, if someone pitches me work that I really don't like, I tell them, give me a thousand an hour and take it or leave it. And apparently he has a number of people who, who would take him up on that offer. And so, yeah, now, especially given your focus area, you might, right, there's now this own uh, discrepancy on campus with which groups have the ability to market their skills for absurd pay raises on an hourly basis versus uh, you know, I remember ta I was, you know, working at a place like CMU at a type, very technical research oriented institution and hearing from the humanities folks and how people were treated in like English or writing or some of those departments, absolutely different universe than, you know, um, uh, CS. And, you know, that's in no way an indictment of that institution, because I think that's the reality in a lot of places and uh, solving that uh, is its own kind of challenge when, when developing some of these systems. Um, but I see we're slowly getting on time. I appreciate all of you being willing to join us for this very winged conversation on community and, and whatnot. Apologies for anyone who was explicitly coming with being excited for the discussion on deliberative decision making. Uh, we'll see if we can reschedule that for a future time, and I'll make sure to at least drop uh, at least get Antoine to jump in the in the Discord and drop a link to some of his research so people can check it out. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to say thank you again for spending part of your Thursday with us. Uh, if anyone yeah, wants to learn more, get more involved, please feel free to hop in the Discord uh, and, uh, and ask any questions or reach out to any of us directly. And otherwise, have a great rest of your Thursday wherever you are in the world. Be well, everyone. Thanks, Eugene. Bye, all. Bye-bye.